You are watching Linux Mint 13 XFCE Bootcamp, and in today's show, we're going to do some post-install cleanup, and that learning begins right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. those of you who beginners who have followed this series up until now if you made it through the last tutorial where we uh, pimped up the bash prompt congratulations you are now officially a happy penguin and you've probably already had a chance to sort through everything that the Linux Mint 13 XFCE desktop has to offer there's a lot of good things here um, I just booted up into the system right now by this time you should have had a chance to read through the known the uh, new features, known problems, and the user guide. You should have also had an opportunity to look at the tutorials, uh, maybe even have a look at the forums. Some of you may have even gone on IRC at this point. Um, and uh, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and prevent this from starting up uh, at startup. But the thing is, if you ever decide that you need this again, it is located in your menu, menu under settings, and the welcome screen is right here. Okay, now. I'm going to cover post-install cleanup, and I can't think of a better utility for cleaning up the system than Linux's answer to CCleaner for Windows, or what was called Crap Cleaner, and that is called BleachBit. And BleachBit does a really nice job of cleaning out your system. We're going to both do this as our standard user and root. And since we've pimped up our terminal, I'm going to go ahead and issue a command to install it. So pressing the F12 key, which is our default key, that launches our terminal. You should have a terminal that looks similar to mine if you followed the last tutorial step by step. And we're going to go ahead and type in an instruction. That is sudo for super user do apt hyphen get install bleach bit. It's going to ask for your password. And now it's going to go through the process of installing this for us. Do we want to continue? Absolutely. Just press Y and enter, or just press the Enter key, and it should work just fine without even pressing in anything. Whenever a Y is capitalized in a prompt like that, then just pressing the Enter key will give that default value of Yes. Now that install has completed, Let's go ahead and run it. All right, there are two ways you can run it. You can run it from the terminal by typing in bleach bit, and then press enter. Sometimes it is good to run things from the terminal because if a problem occurs, you, you will see the output that it's gonna have here. It'll tell you maybe why the program isn't running if it gives you any errors and that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and press the F12 key to hide our terminal here and then we have some preferences here we can hide irrelevant cleaners we can overwrite files overwrite files to hide content start bleach bit with the computer I usually leave these options off okay these are the drives that it's going to uh, overwrite free space if you want it to overwrite and clean out uh, your free space on the computer warning that takes a lot of time to do because basically it's going to do zero writing and that sort of thing. Great for file shredding if you have files that uh, contain sensitive data and you want to have uh, all that free space that, you know, any files that have been deleted, you know, that is a good feature. I will cover that in a moment. Okay, now. These here, all languages will be deleted except those checked. When you install a lot of programs or you have a fresh install of Linux, basically there are a lot of language files that are put into the system. Now, if you only speak one language like I do, then having all of those other language files on your computer is taking up valuable space. So this will automatically go ahead and remove those with the exception of English here. 
and it's scrolling a little fast here. Let me pull that up here. But English by default, for at least on my system, because English is my main language, is already checked, as you will see here. And so it's not going to remove any language files. And then, of course, you have a whitelist here for any items that you definitely do not want to have cleaned or updated. Okay, now, let's go ahead and select some options for cleaning. Okay, first, gives us an option to clean out apt. Why not? We can auto clean, auto remove, and clean. So I'm going to go ahead and select these options here. Then we can also clean out our bash history. Chromium. You can clean out uh, cache cookies, current session. DOM storage is HTML5 cookies that you may want to get rid of. Uh, form history, history search engines, and you can vacuum. And what vacuuming does is it compresses the contents that's in your uh, cache folders and everything at, to reduce space, space and improve speed without removing any data. Okay, then you can also do deep scan here and cleaning up DS files. Deep scan, it's telling us that option is slow. Okay. Okay, and then warning regarding deep scan backup files. Inspect the preview for any files you wish to keep. Actually, I have all of these options selected. Okay, and deep scan temporary files. I have all of them. And then, of course, uh, it will also remove thumbs DB as well. It says the option is a little bit slower, but gives it a good cleaning here. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with Firefox. But maybe, just maybe, I use Firefox as a main browser. So maybe I want it to keep my cookies because, you know, there are websites that I visit frequently that I don't really want to type in the passwords for every time. So I can go ahead and uncheck passwords and if I want to be able to restore previous sessions, I can have that unchecked as well. But th pretty much those two options, cookies and passwords, I leave those unchecked. Okay, and then of course, since Flash is installed, we have the option to clean that out. Now this is where it gets trickier here. Um, and it's going to give us a few warnings. Free disk space. This option is very, very, very very slow. Pressing OK and localizations. Memory. Okay, so I'm going to take, take out memory because uh, that wipes a swap and free memory and um, that really isn't necessary for me. And free disk space. This is the one I was telling you about. It overwrites the free disk space to hide deleted files. Um, only use that option if you have files that you really need to have shredded. Otherwise, um, leave that one alone because it does take a long time. Uh, we can clean out our thumbnail cache if we wish. And then, of course, we can clean out uh, X11 as well. When we are satisfied with this, then all we just do is press the X key here, and it will start going through the cleaning process. It will ask you, are you sure? Absolutely. Press delete, and then we are cleaning out the system. And as you will see here, it's going through a hefty process of cleaning out those files. And I'll pause the video while it's doing this. Okay, and that did not take as long as I thought it was going to take, and that's nice. We did recover 19.7 uh, megabytes, 84 files were deleted, and there were 21 special operations. There were some errors that occurred here, but this was simply because um, it could not clean out, uh, like, the uh, VAR or cache and your app cache and that sort of thing because that requires root privileges. So you are going to see errors when you are running as, uh, as a standard user and not the root user. Let's go ahead and close this because now we're going to see a big difference when we run this as root. So press F12 on your keyboard here and now you'll see what the program did by the way during that time that we were running it. It gives you an output of everything that happened uh, with this program, which is kind of cool. So it's great to try and run things from the terminal, especially if you have a 
program that's a little problematic. Now, we are going to run this as root. And to do this, we're going to type in super user do or sudo. Sudo bleach bin. Okay, that's odd. Hmm. Because this does not look like it is running as root. But we have a shortcut for that as well right here. Because we should be adding in the options. So let's go ahead and to accessories here and see if we get something different. Here it is, bleach bit is root. Then we can type in our password. I thought that was weird. That where I could have mistyped it too. Okay, and as you can see here, now we have options we need to put in again. All right, and as before, all the preferences and everything are okay for this. And uh, we're going to clean out apt, DS scan. Okay, and then all right, and then I'm going to uncheck free disk space and memory because it's really not necessary. And this is a virtual uh, appliance that I'm doing all of this in. And then I'm going to go ahead and press the X button and press the delete button. And then you will see that a lot more things are going to get cleaned out here. Okay, now the process has completed, and you will see that 480 megabytes of free space has been uh, recovered for us, releasing uh, 14,000 files and three special operations with no errors. So running as root is a kind of cool thing because it does clean out um, those root files, and there's a lot of things that it really uh, cleaned out of there, which is a really good thing for us. Okay, well, in the next tutorial here that I have uh, lined up, we're going to be doing some panel customization, and we're going to be adding the Mint menu, so you'll definitely want to stick around for that one.